on the 14th of March 1931 the release of the movie Alamara ushered in a new era in Indian filmmaking it was through this daring tale of warring queens palace intrigue and romance that sound entered Indian cinema for the first time the movie was advertised with the english tagline all living breathing 100% talking and a hindi punchline that said 78 murde insaan zinda ho gaye unko bolte dekho audiences were enthralled and the decision of producer director adesh rarani to make the film in the hindustani language meant that it would reach a wide audience and have a far reaching impact since Hindi cinema has always dominated the Indian film industry. But making a talkie in the 1930s was a huge challenge. It was not only a much more expensive proposition than making a silent film, but the systems of production and exhibition would have to be overhauled. First, a new breed of actors had to be welcomed. Since language was not a barrier in the silent era, many Jewish, Parsi and Anglo-Indian women had become pioneering actresses. But the coming of sound brought the curtain down on their booming careers as their anglicized Hindi accents were not acceptable. Even in Alamara, Irani had to look beyond his studio's top star, Ruby Myers, and opt for a young actress named Zubeda. Theater artists and gramophone singers whose vocation depended on the use of their voice now join the industry. In fact, the talkies brought along a new class of professionals like dialogue writers, music composers and sound recordists. The talkies also required a change in the storytelling format and inspiration was found in the popular Parsi theater of the time. With the rise in musicals, this era marked the beginning of song and dance in Indian films. Hundreds of talkies were released in the 1930s and almost all of them made money. This rising popularity of films was partly due to the devastating effect that the global depression had on the rural economy of India. A massive pool of unemployed people were forced to shift to urban areas and they made up a new audience for films produced in India. The decade of the 1930s saw the talkies going viral across India. The first regional language films included Kali Das in Tamil, Bhakta Prahlad in Telugu, Ayodhya Cha Raja in Marathi, Narasimha Mehta in Gujarati and Joy Moti in Assamese. The new growing audience also attracted a new group of financiers and cinema of this time sourced much of its capital from speculative investors and cotton merchants. A major challenge in making a talkie then was that sound had to be recorded live on the sets and on location. That is the actors had to speak their own lines and the instrumentalists and orchestras had to be hidden behind trees to provide invisible music support. even the buzz of an aeroplane the distant honk of a car or the sneeze of a crew member could ruin the shot thus the need for quieter studios changed the geography of the city of bombay itself earlier dadar due to its proximity to a train station and working class neighborhoods was the go to location for silent film companies but now the studio's new requirement for silence push them northwards away from the core city to suburbs like andheri goregaon and malad the 1930s also gave us some of the early superstars of india like prithvi raj kapoor devika rani jahanara kajjan and k l segal thus the era of india's stocky transition according to film historian devashree mukherjee was momentous It enabled new hierarchies of film finance and labor. It was between 1931 and 1936 that cinema started to unfold as the preeminent mass cultural form of 20th century South Asia. <laughs> 